Creating Still Life Compositions Part 1. Blocking Out Your Still Life Hello fellow artists, this is John Hendrick here for uh, the next phase in our Still Life Compositions. If you've been following our other videos, uh, you've seen how you can use the simple forms to create more complex ones. Um, we've looked at organizing a still life, we've looked up setting up a still life with different lighting and different uh, objects and different orientations. Um, we also worked on a couple of practice drawings, everything from uh, continuous contour to blind contour to uh, actually a, a rough sketch using massing um, in our drawings. This video is going to be phase one for a longer drawing. I'm going to be setting up our our, uh, reference photos and we'll also be starting to block out the basic forms uh, for our still life. So without further ado, let's start with setting up our photo reference. Alright, so if I want to break this drawing down into four quadrants, it'll help me a lot with looking at proportions and looking at where things should go on the final drawing. So um, I printed it out on a sheet of a uh, copy paper, eight and a half by eleven. And what I want to do is I'm going to mark it on two spots, five and a half towards the bottom, five and a half at the top. I'm making two dots. I can connect it with the ruler to get the straight line there. So just line it up and there we go. I'll do the same thing across the top and the bottom. So on one side, in half, so I want to go four and a quarter. So four and a quarter will be here. I'll do the same thing on the other side, four and a quarter here. And again, just now that I have two marks, line up my ruler and there you go. So the benefit of doing something like this on your source uh, is that you can kind of see where things should go in a general sense, right? So I do know that uh, the top of my uh, planter should be in this first section. Um, you can kind of see where things lay out. You know that up into the shoulder um, of the fox statue should be in this top right quadrant. Um, if you don't have access to a printer or can't print out your photo, I'm going to show you a few ways to do it digitally as well. Okay, so to do the same thing digitally, there's a couple of different methods to go about it. Um, I find the easiest one is just to use your regular photo features on your camera itself. So if I have this open and I go to edit, um, you get a couple different options here, but what I really want to work on is I want to go to the three dots up here and use the markup feature. So markup. Okay. Once I have it opened up, Basically, there's a couple different things here. You have all these different pen tools. But there's a ruler. So here's the ruler. And the same premise will apply. You want to line it up to the middle. You can use any color you want. Bigger. Let's go up and down the side here. All right. So take it this way. Line it up. Oops. Another line across. Oops. That's right here. And there you have it. So I can uh, get rid of this. All right, I'm gonna go move back to a different tool. Grip my eraser and I'm gonna erase this area here. And that's it, now I'm done. So I have the same exact thing that I just did, but I have it digitally. All right. So let's get started on the actual drawing. Okay, now that I've sort of blocked out my source photograph for my still life um, into four quadrants, let's start the actual drawing. Phase one of this will be uh, just taking the sheet and just sort of organizing where things are. Um, you really wanna pay attention to things in proportion to each other um, and the placement of these objects. So I'll need an eraser today and I'll be using a couple of different pencils to start. Um, again, so I have um, my uh, 3H, my a lighter pencil, my HB, medium pencil, a 2B, like your regular regular pencil you use every day, and something a little bit darker, a 6B. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with the 3H and just lightly draw out that same sort of quadrant that I had on my source paper. Um, if you'd rather use a ruler for this, you can, but if you can draw pretty straight, that's okay too. Um, I'm hoping that you guys can see this. I'm drawing pretty light. I'll go a little bit darker, just so you can see. Now, 
The whole point of this section is that you don't really want to see it in the final drawing. So you do want to draw it light. All right, now that that is done, I'm looking at my source, which is right here, right? And I'm going to start with where these objects are. If you completed the last assignment, the four different types of practice drawings, basically we'll be doing our sketching with massing um, on a larger scale. All right, so really pay attention to where things are in relationship to each other. But again, you're just blocking it out. There's not a lot of detail. Details will come later. So there's the head of my planter. Here's the body. All right, I have my cubits on here. It extends a little bit into the bottom right section, comes back around, and it's over this way too. Line down, this goes back here, this is back here. All right, if you wanna add feet and other details as you go, you can. All right, that's basically where he is. Now I'll work on the fox. Now the fox starts in the bottom left section. So I'm gonna start there. Pretty much comes right up to where the lines cross and it comes over this way. There's his shoulder. His head is about here. And you have his two ears coming up. And so his chest starts curving in into the bottom section. Um, so I'll have my that's his shoulder here. There's just one leg. His other leg is here. Now notice where his chest ends. It ends almost in the middle of this line. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on those sorts of things. Um, the cup. And in this section, it's pretty much in line, actually it's up a little bit more. It's in line with this part here where it starts. So bring that across. And look at where it ends. It ends, if I'm looking at the drawing, it doesn't get any lower than where this thing is. So I'm gonna keep that in line as well. So I have the curve of the cup. Right, and it has these little, Spheres for feet. This thing has its tail coming around town here. That's pretty much it. These are the basic forms. Oh, I guess I should probably add lightly the section that'll be the plant itself. Um, these are the basic forms I'll be using for this still life. And I really tried my best to sort of line things up properly to make sure that they're all in proportion to each other. Um, you wanna make sure that if the cup ends at a certain spot that you're not gonna draw it at the bottom of the page or too high. Um, same thing with each object, right? So look at the, the source photo a lot for this. And you wanna make sure that everything is in proportion to each other and spaced out correctly. All right, boys and girls, well, that's the basic setup to start a still life. Um, I want you to try it out yourselves, and uh, whenever you finish, I'd love to see the progress that you've made. So um, that's it for this video, and the next video will be going over how to start blocking out the basic uh, uh, values within the still life, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, happy drawing, everybody. I feel like in every video I do a, a blooper, but I, I didn't mess up this time. Magic trick?